rice is always a very big part of my life. When I remember when I was growing up in China, my mother never, never fed me any baby formula. She always prepared a little rice, creamy rice porridge. In Chinese, called juk. It's no juk, it's wonderful. Even up to today, after 75 years, every night I still eat not just one bowl of rice, I actually have three bowls of rice. How many of you know that in America, average, Americans only eat about 17 pounds of rice a year. But in China, many parts of Asia, a 50 pound bag of rice for a, part, for a family of three or four, they'll finish everything in two weeks. Not all rice are created equal. There are over 4,000 varieties of rice, different color, different shape, different size. I want to show you a few varieties that I'll be using today. Here, look at that. This is the regular long grain rice. When it's cooked, it's nice and dry and fluffy. They use for fried rice. Of course, everybody knows that this is very healthy brown rice without removing the rice whole. After you remove it, it's white rice. And this is the sweet rice or glutinous rice. When it's cooked, it's nice and sticky. They make a lot of dessert. This is the California wild rice. It's native to the American. This is wonderful long and got a wonderful texture and flavor. This is the basmati rice. The taxamati rice also is very good and got a wonderful texture and as well as aroma and flavor. This is the Thai black glutinous rice. When it's cooked, got a wonderful dark purple color and also got a wonderful texture. And we're gonna put this, we're gonna use a lot of these variety of rice in the next few dishes. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the ping nam, ping nam pilaf. See, here I have four pieces of chicken right here. You can use chicken thigh or chicken leg, whatever. I slightly marinate a little bit with soy sauce. And then I also have some rice, long grain rice, bell pepper, some snow pea or frozen green peas. And here is the spicy sausage. This is a spicy sausage. Normally they don't have this, but I add a tiny bit of these to make it nice and flavorful. And of course, this is the Chinese sausage, a little bit skinnier and also very flavorful. You can use either one. I'm going to heat up my wok and we're going to brown the rice, okay? First, heat up the wok and I am going to, oh, let's turn this down a little bit. Put a tiny bit of oil. One and a half to two teaspoon, move them around, and then brown your chicken. We're gonna brown the chicken, okay? One, skin side first. Wow, can you hear the sizzling sound? Very exciting. Brown, brown, move them around. Whoa, it doesn't take too long. Turn it upside down, turn it upside down. Make sure they jump, but don't get out of your walk. Look at that, brown, nicely brown. By the idea of doing is you render some of the fat. You don't want to get all the fat into your food. So you brown it and you make it nice and shiny. And then at the same time, we're gonna cut up some sausage, okay? We're gonna cut up some sausage. One, two, three, four. Cut up. Make sure you, things that rose, make sure you hold onto a firm grip. Use downward forward motion, okay? And then you can also put this right into your wok to get the flavor out, right here. Okay, always remember to clean up, okay? And then, of course, cut up a tiny, tiny bit of red bell pepper. This will give some nice color contrast to your dish. You have nice red and green at the same time. We set it aside, put it right here, and get ready the rice. Now, look at this, with brown. Wow, look at this. And then, while you are browning this, before you add the rice, we're going to add this few seasoning. Look at this. I have cumin. I have turmeric. And I have black pepper, chopped garlic, and some shallot. We put them all right in here. Now, everybody know, chicken and rice always tend to end up in the same pot. Dishes like Cajun jambalaya, Mexican arrows, corn pollo, Spanish paella. Oh, look at this. Stir. When it's all nice and done, you put the rice in, 
toss the rice, move them around, toss, toss, and kind of let it cook. And of course, Peng Nam is a city, a little island off of Malaysia. And this is a wonderful family dish and everybody love it. That's why you call Peng Nam rice pilaf. This is done. And then cover this and cook for approximately 18 to 20 minutes in medium low heat and make sure turn it down so it's nice and done. And when it's done, almost done, you sprinkle some, I'll show you, sprinkle some red bell pepper and then frozen green peas right on top. And just like the one that I have just done, I have done one for you already. Right here, we shut it off because we have so many people in the audience. I don't want to waste the time. So we cook, whoa, look at this. This is marvelous. We have two of these and then we will transfer this and look at how beautiful this rice is, huh? And to make it nice and delicious, or even more wonderful, what I do is I garnish it with a tiny bit of basil and a tiny bit of cilantro. And you have a beautiful pinam rice pilaf. <laughs> now we're gonna go to another country, India. Basmati rice is actually native in India. Got a wonderful, rich, nutty flavor, perfectly well served with nuts and dry fruits. It's a wonderful Indian festival rice dish that's served in many occasions. Here, all I have is rice, long grain rice, basmati long grain rice, some green onion, serrano, and garlic masala. This is a very unique Indian spice, some ginger and garlic. While I'm heating up my frying pan, I'm gonna quickly mince some ginger. Done. Mince ginger, done. Then when it's hot enough, use a tiny bit of oil. Now this is wonderful. Very easy to do. And then I put some garlic, minced ginger, jalapeno or serrano, chop and also some green onion, chop, stir this. Wow, look at this, this is hot. I feel the heat already. Then put the rice in. Saute it for a little while. Make sure I don't lose a grain. Very expensive, very nice. And then when it's almost ready, you put a tiny bit of this garlic masala spices right in here. Put the water so we can let it cook. You know, you can cook on a stove top. You can also cook this in the oven. This is very unique. Some of the unique frying pan, the handle can withstand up to 350 degrees. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this right over there and let it cook. Oh, in the wonderful oven that we have here and let it cook around 350 degrees. In the meantime, this is done. We take this out because we have cooked another portion of this so we can feed everybody in the studio. This is very hot, so we're gonna put it right here. In the meantime, we're gonna brown. This is walnut, pitted, dry pitted prunes, and this is apricot. You can use any nut and any of this fruit, but this is my favorite. Besides prunes, it's very healthy. So we would use this and also give a nice color contrast. Stir this, stir this. When the rice is ready, we are gonna put the rice in a nice surfing platter. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put everything back here. Remove these so everybody can see better, okay? And the rice should be served right in here. This is marvelous, just perfectly done. Very easy, very easy to do. Put it here, it's still hot. And then sprinkle the fruit, which is, have been browned. Put it right here. This will give a wonderful, wonderful flavor, color, texture, and everything, and nutrient. The wonderful thing about this is you should serve these with 
extra, extra roasted coconut. And my version of the Indian chutney, I serve this with plum sauce. That's how you can make beautiful basmati rice with nuts and dry food. But now, the question is, how do you eat in India? The real experience of Indian food is more than just cooking. We have to learn how to eat like an Indian. Let me show you what I mean. I found this popular Indian restaurant in Singapore that is truly ahead of its class. Everybody knows that I always use my chopstick to eat, but I am in this traditional Southern Indian curry restaurant. Like all my good Indian friends, they use their hand to eat, so I gotta wash my hand. So we can get ready to eat. Tilaga, can you uh, show me how to properly eat? What? I have no idea, but we'll just follow, okay? Okay, this is fish. This is fish cooked in a curry sauce. Put it over here, right next to the rice, long grain rice. Okay. I serve that. We're enjoying the famous fish head curry, which is served with bitter melon and pickled cabbage. To cool our palace, we're drinking fresh lime coolers. Indians have very strict customs. For instance, they only eat with their right hand. This gives a new meaning to the word finger food, don't you think? Here is the best part. There are no dishes to wash. When you fold a banana mat in half, it signals the waiter that you are done with your dinner. Here's my breakfast for tomorrow. See what I mean? Indian food is a hands-on experience. That's why there's always plenty of rice on hand to soak up all the spicy sauces. The next dish I'm gonna show you is wild rice orange walnut vinaigrette. It's a wonderful, wonderful salad. It's actually a rice salad. I used this California wild rice grown right here in the sunny Sacramento Valley and all over the state. It's wonderful. Got a wonderful nutty, chewy texture, nutty flavor. All you have to do is cook this rice right here in this pot. Look at that. And then put approximately two and a half portion of water of rice. Wow. Either water or broth, okay? How many of you know that when you cook r wild rice, sometimes they triple the volume and sometimes even quadruple. Wild rice is wonderful in soup, in main dishes, in salad, side dishes, or even desserts. You can use it all kind of thing. You just let it cook. Now, normally it takes uh, approximately 40 to 55 minutes to cook this rice. That means you should let it cook and cover it, just let it cook. If there's extra water, liquid, just drain it off. When it's done, look at this. When it's done, you fluff it, it's nice and dry and fluffy. And we're gonna mix with all of these ingredients. We have some mushroom. Oh, done. We have mushroom. We're gonna put some mushroom right here. Okay, sliced mushroom, button mushroom, and some fresh shiitake mushroom, slice. Once again, good healthy food, dry peated prunes. Mix it, give that texture and flavor. Some roasted walnut. Mix it, give the texture. And then some celery. Ah, oh. and then some green onion. And then some cilantro. Very, very good. Mix them all up and set it aside, okay? And in the meantime, I also want to make a salad dressing. This is salad dressing right here. Look at this. I'm going to make some salad dressing right here. Here, I have some soy sauce, some orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice, tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of sugar, 
not much. And also a tiny bit of Sichuan peppercorn right here, half a teaspoon or so, and sesame seed oil, look at that. And then finally, mix them all up, we're gonna have some walnut oil. This adds some extra flavor. Look at this, okay? Now how many of you know that there's a lot of things that you should know about the wild rice? Whether it's from California or elsewhere, this happened to be California wild rice. They only have about 70 calories per cup of cooked rice. It's a great source of protein, niacin, potassium, and calcium. And the great thing about this is uncooked wild rice can be kept in cool, dry place or in the freezer indefinitely. So it's very, very easy to do. I'm gonna take this off and put it on the side. And then we are going to show you how wonderful how easy it is to serve this. When this is nice and ready, we put this right over here. Look at how beautiful, how interesting. This is not only delicious, but also very, very nutritious. And I put some roasted walnut right on top. I am nuts about this thing. And then a tiny, tiny bit of, oh, look at this, orange or lemon zest. Put it right here. You know what you're gonna have? you have a wonderful, wonderful white rice salad with orange walnut dressing. Are you ready for a rice dessert? Everybody knows rice pudding, and most of you love rice pudding. Will you believe this is how it looks in Thailand? Look at this. No, I don't burn it. I didn't burn this. It is made from black glutinous rice. Look at that. The same one that I showed you earlier. When it's cooked, it has a dark, deep purple color like this. When you serve it, you just basically cook it with ginger, brown sugar, and then when you serve it, you just top it with a teeny tiny bit of sugar, extra sugar, tiny tiny bit, and also some coconut milk or coconut cream. Just looks like this, look at that. This is how beautiful it is. And of course, you wanna make it more interesting, put some toasted coconut on top. This is a wonderful, wonderful black glutinous rice dessert. It's a little bit different. The people in Thailand love this particular dessert. Still, it is not for everybody. So take it or leave it. It's a black tie optional. <laughs> this is no joke, I love it. The next one I wanna show you is a mango with coconut glutinous rice. Let me show you this is another Thai wonderful dessert that is a little bit more user friendly. I call it, as I said, because of mango, I'm gonna call it coconut mango glutinous rice. Here, look at that, I have Steam some glutinous rice. When you steam glutinous rice, you should use less sugar, less uh, water than the regular long grain rice. Nice and moist and still nice and hot. I'm gonna set it aside and put it right here. In the meantime, to save time, I'm gonna mix some brown sugar and coconut. And in here, we'll mix this coconut milk. You can use coconut cream or coconut milk. Mix all of these together, dissolve it, because this is slightly warm. So we dissolve these, look at that, mix it up. In China, they have no whisk, this is what they do. You burn out 45,000 calories in less than three seconds. <laughs> You're totally exhausted. Look at that. When it's done, you put this right in here and get the flavor out. Allow, allow the rice to soak this into, and the flavor permeate. Look at this, it's really, really unique. And you cannot have mango glutinous rice unless you have mango. So we're gonna show you how to get the mango ready. Let us sit aside, let the coconut flavor and the sweetness of the brown sugar permeate into the rice. And then we're gonna show you how to do this mango. A lot of people love mango. Mango, some of them are from Mexico, a lot of them are from uh, Philippines and different parts of Southeast Asia. You use your knife and you cut this piece out. Oh, done. <laughs> Magic. You put it in and the done thing, ah, done. And then you sh I'll show you how easy it is to peel this. Look at this. Peel this, 
peel this. I use this big paring knife to peel it. And then I cut this up. Look at that. Now, I want to show you two things, okay? One is with the skin still on. I want to show you how to serve mango and to eat it. And then another one is already peeled. The one that's already peeled, I do it like this. One, two, I slice it. I slice it, thin slices, thin slices, thin slice all the way. Everything I do today is rice. Look at that. I immediately can open it up like that. Look at that. Can you see that? Very easy to do. I just fan it out. And then this way, we can serve the rice later. I will set it aside. In the meantime, I want to show you something even more interesting. Now, when you eat mango, this is how you do it. You first hold on to it and then cut it at an angle, 45 degree. 45 degree. 45 degree. Okay? 45, 45, and then you go one, two, three, four. When you open it up, you know what? It looks like this. Look, isn't it cute? Isn't it amazing? Absolutely interesting. And then you put this over here, and we're going to serve these. This is wonderful. Everything we do today is interesting. Look at that. We put this over here, and then we put this over here. Look at that. And then we put this over here. And finally, top it with some roasted coconut and roasted walnut. Look at how beautiful. This is a marvelous dish everybody can do. I like <laughs> to... I like to think of rice as a blank canvas. It is a perfect flavor carrier for cuisines from all around the world. From Malaysia to Minnesota, variety is the rice of life. Enjoy it. Until next time, remember, if Yen can cook, so can you. Jia <laughs>